Greetings, brothers and sisters. May grace and peace be multiplied unto you all from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. As you are aware, we have been studying Paul's letter to the Ephesians under the heading, The Sovereign God and the Mystery of His Will. We are at Lesson 42. Um, you will recall that last week we started to look at the seven elements which are the ground or the basis of the unity of the spirit and we looked at the first of these elements one body and we were led to ask one of our medical doctors to come and to look at the human body and how it operates how the members of the body the human body relate to each other and see if we could get a better understanding of how the mystical body of Christ or the church should relate to each other. And so Dr. Melissa Royal will be our teacher this evening. I know that the Lord is going to use her in a tremendous way to speak to our hearts. And I'm very delighted that she is here. And I ask that we listen very attentively and open our hearts to what the Lord has to say. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts this evening. Thank you so much, Pastor Bartlett, for inviting me to speak with us this evening. It is truly a privilege to be with you all. I'll be looking more closely at the human body this evening. I warn you, we normally talk about these topics in the early morning, but I ask you to stay with me. I will start by really looking at the human body in, in, in and of itself. Um, the first question that came to my mind was who made the body? The first known mention of human beings that we find in scripture is mentioned in Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That is in the image and likeness of God. Again in Genesis 2 verse 7 we see that the Lord God formed, that is, created the body of man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. This is from the Amplified Version. We see declarations of our creation throughout Scripture. The psalmist in Psalm 119 verse 73 said, With your very own hands you formed me. Now breathe your wisdom over me so I can understand you. Message version. And again in Psalm 139 verses 13 to 16, he declares, Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, your breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. This is in scripture, you know. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life are all prepared before I'd even lived one day. The message virgin again. This is absolutely amazing that the Lord knows us so 
intimately every single bone in our body every stage of life that we started that we are now at he knows yes we were made to worship God in by and with our bodies in reference to the collective saints of Jesus Christ the true church Ephesians 4 verse 4 says there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling and we're gonna talk about this one body first Corinthians verse 12 verses 1 to 3 from the message message version says what I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets to work in our lives this is complex and often misunderstood but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable and this is why we're here today remember how you were when you didn't know God led from one phony God to another never knowing what you were doing just doing it because everybody else did it it's different in this life God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can for instance by using your heads you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say Jesus be accursed nor would anyone be inclined to say Jesus is master without the insight of the Holy Spirit it goes on to talk about the various gifts that God handed out that originated in his spirit and then it goes on more to talk about that we all benefit everybody benefits all kinds of things are handed out by the spirit to all kinds of people and the variety is wonderful further in the first Corinthians um, chapter 12 it talks about wise counsel clear understanding simple trust healing the sick miraculous acts proclamation distinguishing between spirits tongues interpretation of tongues all these gifts have a common origin but they are handed out one by one by the Spirit of God he decides on who gets what and when we don't get to decide which role we play in the body God assigns it to us some of us may run away from that role but at the end of the day we still have to be obedient to God you can easily now see how this kind of thing works by looking no further at your own body your body has many parts limbs organs cells the very tiniest of the organs is cells but no matter how many parts you name you're still one body let us take a look now at the human body to further illustrate this our bodies are supported by the skeletal system which consists of 206 bones that are connected by tendons ligaments and cartilage the skeleton not only helps us to move but it is involved in pr the production of blood cells and the storage of calcium and the teeth are also part of the skeletal system when we look at it we see where the skull is attached to the neck bones they're attached to the shoulder bones I know some of you know that song they're attached to the long bones of the limb that's your arm your forearm and the hand and then you see where um, the shoulder is attached to your thoracic cage that moves in and out with the respiration um, all of that is attached along your vertebral bones that's the bones that hold your spine and then um, your hip bones and to those are attached again the long bones of the lower limb those are your hips um, the what we call the femur those are the bones of the thigh and then the bones of the legs and those are attached to the bones of the feet so we usually refer to the foot as the whole of the lower limb but the foot is actually the very last part and we see where all of those bones are attached together by those things that we call the tendons and the ligaments the Holy Spirit paints a picture in Ezekiel 37 verses 78 about these bones being attached to one another 
And Ezekiel said, I prophesied just as I'd been commanded. As I prophesied, there was a sound and oh, rustling. The bones moved and came together, bone to bone. I kept watching, sinews formed. Sinews are the, another name for ligaments and tendons. So the scriptures talk about sinews formed, then muscles on the bones, then skin stretched over them. Message version. So that's a skeletal system looking at your bones. Then you have your different system, another system, the body's muscular system that consists of about 650 muscles that aid in movement, blood flow and other bodily functions such as um, storage of energy. There are three main types of muscle. There's skeletal muscle, which is connected to the bone itself and helps with voluntary movement. That's what you want to do. Um, and then there's smooth muscle that's found inside the organs. For example, your blood vessels that helps to move the blood along. And then there is cardiac muscle, which is found inside the heart. And that helps to pump blood out of the heart and relaxes so that blood can flow inside the heart. So when we look at the muscular um, system, then we see where they are attached um, one to each other, and then they are attached um, via your ligaments into the bones themselves, and then uh, where there are periods where um, in between the muscles is something that we call fascia. So every little cell is for a different function and most of the times it's really for support um, and mostly for movement. Now that sounds like a lot of work. The body does get tired over time. In old age, according to um, Ecclesiastes verse, chapter 12 verse 3, in old age your body no longer serves you well. Muscles slacken, grip weakens, joints stiffen. So even the scriptures inform us of what happens over time. Our body does get tired. This body gets tired. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Let's look at the nervous system at this time. So your nervous system consists of the central nervous system, um, which rarely... Um, speaks to your brain and spinal cord and then your peripheral nervous system that speaks to the nerves that connect every other area in your body. Um, your peripheral nervous system um, is connected to your central nervous system and those get signals from your brain along your spinal cord to your other organs such as your fingers that tell your fingers what to do and then there's sensation that you get through your skin. For example, you touch a pin and um, you feel pain because the sensation travels from your finger along your peripheral nervous system, the nerves on the outside that send signals to your spinal cord and then up to your brain and your brain interprets that to say, ouch, that hurts. That's why you don't stay on the pin. And then um, the signals your brain processes it some more that says, okay, we need to move from here. And that, those send signals to your muscles in your hand that make you pull away from the pin. And that's really how it functions, you know, together that makes you do things as conscious movement, pulling you away from your hand. And then there are also um, nerves involved in things that you're not even aware of most of the time, such as breathing. You need your nerves to stimulate your chest to go in and out so that you can breathe. So you have different signals from all over your body that go to your brain, your brain processes it and then tells the rest of you what to do. That's pretty amazing when you look at a network. That's a network to look at. Um, so let's turn our attention now to the circulatory system. So your circulatory system consists of your heart, your blood and your blood vessels. When we look at um, a picture of your heart, blood comes in the right side of your heart at the top, goes to the bottom, then it's squeezed out of the heart, 
it travels by vessels to the lungs they get oxygen in the lungs and then they travel back to the heart with the oxygenated blood and that blood is what you need to survive so that blood with oxygen leaves the left side of the heart and it goes to the head your upper body and then by more vessels to get all the way down to your lower body and to your toenails as well um, so that is a pretty extensive system so what it does it's really responsible for moving blood outside your heart and nutrients oxygen carbon dioxide and hormones around your body to perform the necessary functions so the very tiny part of your circulatory system is at the very end where your arteries become smaller things arterioles i call them which branch off into one cell thick things called capillaries and those lose the oxygen to the tissues that's how you breathe and um, do all the functions of the different body and then those become very small vessels called the venules which become um, veins and the larger veins end at the right side of the heart pretty amazing if you think about it absolutely amazing so another system that we can look at is how we breathe the respiratory system it allows us to take in vital oxygen from the atmosphere through our nose so we're taking through the nose goes to the back of the nose and then down the tube called the trachea and then branches to each lung so you have a right lung and a left lung um, here you exchange your oxygen for carbon dioxide your body has used up the oxygen now you've produced the carbon dioxide so you need to let that go out of the system and so that's where you have gaseous exchange at the level of the lungs where you exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide and then you breathe out it travels up back the trachea and then you breathe out the carbon dioxide it's vitally important for you to be able to exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide and in your other muscles such as the diaphragm um, helps you with this exchange with the movement of your lungs to inspire and to expire very important when you're exercising and that's a good thing to do with COVID these days all right Another vitally important system that we'll look at is a digestive system. So this consists of a series of organs um, that are connected that allow you to take in food. So your mouth and your teeth help you to chew up food. You take in the food and then your body breaks it down at different levels in order for you to absorb the food, which is broken down into energy for you to use it and whatever is not broken down into energy um, get stored right and so food enters the mouth travels down the another long tube called the esophagus and then enters into the stomach where all along that chain it, the digestion process has started and then you have more digestive juices that are produced in your stomach and um, then it is expelled through your small intestine where you absorb most of your nutrients and then to the large intestine where you absorb most of your water and then the um, rest of it is expelled via the rectum through the anus um, by this time it's no longer food it's almost refused yes you have other parts of your digestive system such as your liver and your pancreas that play such a vital role where they secrete the necessary digestive juices that break down the food you can't live without most of your digestive system um, you really need most of it and so again that is also important and then here we see where the different parts of the system are so much interconnected um, 
that one part needs the other and then leads on to the other. Let us turn our attention now to the urinary system. The urinary system helps to produce wastes, mostly urea, um, in the body when it is produced by certain foods that are broken down. Um, the, the system really consists of or starts with two kidneys. Um, each kidney leads on to a long tube called the ureter. Um, the ureter gets the fluid that is filtrated really. So all the blood goes to your kidney and that's filtered. Um, water is produced that has nutrients, some, some salts in there and from the kidney um, the ureters carry the fluid that go to the bladder, which really is a storage organ, until it's an appropriate time for you to let it go. And then at the appropriate time, um, urine is expelled from the bladder via the urethra um, to the outside. And it's, you have the urethra that in, um, exits, you know, um, in females and then that goes through the penis um, for males uh, so urine is produced by the kidneys and then exits the bladder um, that way all of this is again controlled by nerves that we spoke about before it tells the bladder when to contract and to expel the urine and then it tells the bladder when to store when to relax so that the urine can be stored in your bladder until the appropriate time um, again extremely important let's now look at the endocrine are you still with me let's now look at the endocrine system <laughs> the endocrine system consists of eight major glands that secrete hormones into the blood so the endocrine system we're talking about organs like um, your thyroid um, the pancreas you know that breaks down um, produces insulin and so on that um, breaks down the sugars your adrenal glands that sit right on top of the kidneys um, the ovaries and um, testicles and so on in males placenta placenta in females during pregnancy and these organs may be one place but they secrete hormones inside the bloodstream that may have their action elsewhere in the body um, so this is extremely important when you're talking about regulation of um, how the body uses nutrients how the body uses their hormones metabolism very important when you talk about growth and extremely important in children as well and sexual function um, another part um, of the systems the reproductive system when we talk about sexual function really allows the humans or every species really to procreate the male re reproductive system consists of the penis the testes the female reproductive system consists of the vaginal uterus ovaries that produce eggs and so um, eggs and sperm come together for fertilization and then that gets implanted and grows in the uterus and then the fetus grows and develops until the time of birth a remarkable remarkable process that's characterized by extreme um, extremes of growth and development absolutely remarkable there are other organs um, and systems um, such as your immune system that's responsible for the body's defense against bacteria, the production of certain cells, white cells especially, that's supposed to fight germs which are harmful. We talk about germs, viruses, bacteria, fungi. The lymphatic system consists of your lymph nodes and ducts and the vessels that also play um plays a role in your body's defensives and your ability really to fight infections um and it also re removes excessive lymph fluid from your bodily tissues and return it um to the blood a very large organ that we may not pay much attention to but absolutely need the skin 
It's the body's largest organ, protects us from the outside world. Um, it's our first defense against germs, the bacteria, viruses, and so on. And um, our skin is so important. It really helps to regulate body temperature, eliminate waste through perspiration. And um, in addition to the skin, the rest of that system consists of your hair, your fingernails, toenails that are really responsible for protection of the organs that are under them. You have vital organs, five vital organs really, the brain, the heart, the kidneys, the lungs, and the liver. These you really cannot live without. Um, your brain, we had spoken up before, your body's control center for signals um, to other organs through your nervous system, responsible for your thoughts, your feelings, memory, and storage, and just your general perception of what's going on around you. We spoke about the heart that's responsible for pumping blood um, through the rest of the body, the kidneys for removing wastes, the liver for detoxifying harmful chemicals, breaking down drugs that you take in, producing sugar that you need to, you know, stay alive, um, filtering the blood and to secrete bile and so on that helps with digestion, as well as production of your clotting proteins that allow you to form a clot if there's a bleed. Um, we spoke about the lungs that are responsible for um, exchange of oxygen for carbon dioxide that we exhale. So that's really a lot to take in, but essentially every organ, every cell um, that forms your tissues, all the tissues that form your organs, all your organs that form your body systems, are really joined together in such a way that make you able to live, move, really, and have your being. Ephesians 4 verse 16 said that the whole body is fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. So the body is so joined together um, and we had looked at the ways in which it is joined together so that each part can do what it needs to do. And that makes to the increase of the body, that's the ability of the body, unto the edifying of itself in love. So the Lord keeps us really in step with each other. Each part of us, or each of us, is a part of this awesome structure that the Lord has created called the body. We may be a toenail, we may be a fingernail in the body of Christ, we may be the vessels on the heart that supply the very heart that need to pump blood around the rest of the body. We may be the brain, we may be, you know, the thinkers, the ones with, you know, ideas and stuff. We may be part of the heart or the heart itself that's so necessary at where we are um, to supply one another or to help one another. We may be a liver, we may be a pancreas, so many different parts of our natural body um, that are so innumerable really and each one of us as we are parts just as how our body is made up of so many different parts so are we in the body of Christ. We see that by looking at our own bodies although many parts it is still one body. No matter how many parts you name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which God has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized, 1 Corinthians 12. 
Each of us is now a part of the resurrected body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, that's the Spirit of God, where we all come to drink. So there are no more labels that we use to identify ourselves. Labels such as Jew, Greek, slave or free, those are no longer useful or any other words that we can come up in modern day time that we might describe ourselves. We need something larger, something more comprehensive. So not just the different individual systems of the body, but everything coming together. I want you to think about how all of this makes us more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, and this is 1 Corinthians 12 verse 14 to 18, if foot said, I'm not elegant like the hand, embellished with the rings, I guess I don't belong to the body. We won't say that, right? I guess I don't belong to this body. Would that make it so? Not quite. If ear said, I'm not beautiful like I, limpid and expressive, if the body was all I, how could it hear? If all air, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts. Each its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. And sometimes our own self-importance really get the better of us. Can you imagine I telling hand, get lost, I don't need you, or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice it works the other way. The lower part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye for instance, but you can't live without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you're concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is, without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower part than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair. The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part is dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, Every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into exuberance. As verses 25 to 26. So this is well known in times of illness. If any part of your body is sick, then the entire body feels it. If even if it is a toenail that is injured from trauma, the pain is very real. Your emotions change, the way you feel in your body changes, the way we behave if a knife slips and cuts us, or we receive a diagnosis we don't want to hear. The one in that one part of the body, the bottom line is all of us, we feel it. And when we look at the different things that can go wrong in the different parts of the body, a bone is broken here, or 
we have a diabetes and the nerves don't work properly so we're feeling pain all the time or we're not feeling pain at all so we step on the pin and then it becomes a sore and then they have to chop it off because it becomes dead if there's a problem with the heart a hole in the heart and it it fails it's not you know pumping properly then the whole body feels it if part of um, you can't breathe properly for whatever reason something that can be reversed like asthma um, or something else like what older people get COPD if it is that a part of the colon isn't working and you need a bag if something is happening to one part of the body the entire body feels it. So we are Christ's body. Each of us, we make a part of Christ's body and we must never forget it. We have to accept our part, not to exaggerate any self-importance, but to understand that we are part of something huger, the body of Christ. So it should be obvious by now that Christ's church is a complete body and is not one gigantic undimensional part. Each of us has different roles to, to play. And so Paul went on to say, but now I want to lay out a far better way for you. Ephesians 5 verse 21 says, Out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. Further down in 26 to 27 it says, Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but do not use your anger as a fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can help others who cannot work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth, either to yourself or to other people. Say only what helps, each word a gift. This is a far better way that we treat the body of Christ. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. The message version again, verses 31 to 32. Make a clean break of all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. Love each other heartily. Recognize and appreciate our differences. We have to help each other. If one part of the body is sick, everybody feels it. We have to help each other. Not just in thought, I'm going to pray for you today. And that was the prayer. No, that's not what we're talking about. Help each other. Proverbs 3 verse 27 says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in thine power or thine hand, of thine hand to do it. So if somebody comes to you and asks for something and, you know, there is the need, don't withhold from them and you know that you're able to do it, but you just don't feel like it or you don't want to. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give thee when thou hast it by thee. You have it by you and your brother or your sister come um, with a need and you decide that, boy, you don't feel like it, so you're not going to. The Bible is speaking to us that we should not say to our brother or our sister, you're not going to do that to your hand. Something happened to your hand, you're going to deal with it. Something happened to your foot, you better deal with it or you cannot go anywhere. Yes, something is going on, you can't eat, you're vomiting, you're going to stop. 
you're going to deal with it and so it is that with each part of the body when something is happening and we have to deal with that part of the body so it is when things are happening in our lives as individuals but individuals but part of the body of Christ will have to deal with it we'll have to stop and deal with it we need to understand that our own uniqueness was created by God for his body to carry out his work let us ask for wisdom to understand him and to understand who we are in him and then this will give us the freedom in our hearts to truly care for each other as the body of Christ let us pray Lord Jesus we want to thank you for today thank you for your word to our hearts that each of us we make up your body we cannot tell each other you're not significant enough go away and maybe tomorrow I will help you your word advises us strongly against that I pray even now Lord that you give us a heart to care we're not going to willingly cut off one part of our body because we feel like it so let us not cut each other off because we can't be bothered I pray that even in times like these you change our heart you change our way of thinking that we may think like you you give us your brain and your heart to think like you and to treat each other the way that you treat us with love and with care we ask that you touch us again and you let this word find root in our hearts that we will do and we will treat each other with the love and care and respect that we treat our own bodies in Jesus name Amen. God bless you.